The CSS Styles panel acts as the central hub for all things CSS and Dreamweaver, providing you with both a global view of all document styles, as well as allowing you to focus on individual rules and style application. So over my interface, I have the CSS Styles panel. If you don't see it, it's typically found in the top panel grouping. And if you still don't see it, you can go over to Window and make sure that CSS Styles is opened up. At the top of the panel, you'll find buttons for two views, All and Current. The All view gives you an overview of all CSS styles applied to the current document, while the Current view gives you a detailed view of the rules applied to a selected element. Before we start creating styles in earnest, let's take a moment to get comfortable with finding our way around and using the CSS Styles panel. So I'm going to click back on All View. Notice at the top of all of our rules, we see the external style sheet name main.css. So if I have an external style sheet applied to my file, its name will show up at the very top of the listing. In parentheses, I see screen, comma, projection. These are the media types that it's applying to. So if this was a printer style sheet, it would say printer beside it. So screen and projection tell me exactly where these styles are being applied. Now I want to scroll down a little bit because I notice something's going on over here on my page. If I click inside of this main heading, I can see that it's an H1 and it's found within the pound main content div region. I can use my CSS styles panel to tell exactly what's going on there. I'm going to scroll down until I find the selector pound main content space H1. I'm going to click on that. So when you select one of these rules from the list above that, there's this little small window below it that's going to display all of the properties for that particular rule. In this case, any H1 found inside of an element with an ID main content. So here we can see color, we can see font family, font size, we've got font weight selected and a margin, but there's nothing really pushing it off the edge of the page. So we're going to add a little padding to the left to do that. It's very simple to do here. You'll notice there's a little link that says add property. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to type in padding dash left. Now, if you're not really sure which property you need, you can grab the pull down menu and here are all the properties that we can set and padding left is very easy to select. So if you don't remember exactly how something's typed, it's easy to fix. I'm going to type in 20 PX for pixels, hit return. And you can see now my main heading is now aligned up with the rest of my text. So that's exactly what I need. I prefer this view of all my properties, but there are multiple views that we can use here. Notice against the far left edge, we have a category view. And there I can see all the properties pertaining to fonts, backgrounds, block level settings, things like this. If you're used to the CSS rule definition dialog box, it's arranged in exactly the same categories. The middle icon shows me a list view with the set properties at the top and then every other property that I could set underneath that. Now my favorite view is the third one, and that is the show only set properties. And that's my favorite, show only set properties. It reduces the amount of clutter and it only shows you the properties you have set, which I really like. If I click inside the main header and I go over to my CSS styles panel and I click on current, I get a summary for the existing selection. And then I see a very similar set of properties below that. Regardless of whether you're on all or you're on current, you can always kind of do what we've just done. I'm gonna scroll down and I'm going to click in the heading to latest news. As soon as I do that, notice that my CSS styles changes to reflect the element that I have selected. We don't have a selector for our heading to, so we can use the CSS styles panel to go ahead and create one. Anytime that you want to create a new rule using the CSS styles dialog box, you can simply go down to the lower right hand corner, find the little new rule icon that has the plus symbol and click on that. That brings up the new CSS rule dialog definition box. This can be a pretty complicated dialog box the first time you see it. Let's break down what's happening here. First off, we have a pull down menu and it allows us to do class, IDs, or tag or element selectors, or a compound selector based on a current selection. Now you'll learn more about those selectors a little bit later on. We're gonna do a compound selector, and then you can choose to be either more specific or less specific by clicking on these buttons. I'm gonna choose less specific. I'm gonna make it match the selectors I have over here on the side. So pound main content space H2. The next thing it wants to know is, where am I going to place this? We're going to put it in our external main.css, although we could do this document only, or you could put it in a brand new style sheet file if you wanted to. So we're going to say main.css. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And this brings up the CSS rule definition dialog box. Let's just go ahead and choose a font family of trebuchet from the pull down menu right there. 
Let's give it a size of 1.2, and I can type in EM and hit Tab, and it'll select M's for the unit of measurement. For color, I'm going to type in pound 3C3909. Now, if you're wondering about what all these properties mean and how did I get those fonts, don't worry about that. We're going to cover all of that a little bit later on. We're also going to give it some margins. I'm going to click on the box category on the left-hand side, deselect same for all for margins, and then for a bottom margin, I'm going to give it 0.4 M's. And then for a left margin, I'm going to give it 20 pixels. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now we're heading to reformats exactly the way we asked it to. The CSS Styles panel also allows us to rename and move styles around. You'll notice that here is a heading 1, and there's an H2, and then a little later on there's an H4. Really would be better if these were in order. I can grab these rules individually and drag them around within my style sheets. It is making a physical change to my style sheet. It's moving these rules above the rules that are now below them. So you don't want to do this haphazardly because in CSS, the last rule applied wins. So certain rules may need to be below another rule. But in this case, it makes a lot more sense to just organize them in that fashion. Although it seems like we've covered a lot of ground, we've just scratched the surface of what we can do with the CSS styles panel. Don't worry, you'll be using the CSS styles panel throughout the rest of this title which will give you plenty of time to familiarize yourself with these capabilities as well as exploring some of the additional functionality.